and her husband, William Jefferson Clinton. And he exposed, or he's, well, he haven't exposed him, but he is addressing it, has addressed it. Um, your Bushes, your Rumsfelds, your Cheneys, they all know what's up. They all in on it together. There's only one of these jackals I ain't quite figured out yet, so I'm not going to put his name in here. Because it looked like, but he might have been going to the right. So I'm not going to mention him. I have to talk to my elders that know him better than I do in order to determine if what I see is really what I see. Because it, at the close of the age, as you get closer to where I'm at, more deception is exposed, so the righteous have to use a greater deception than the deceiver. So sometimes the misdirection is confusing. I can go do the math on it, but I haven't done it yet because I don't want it really to be true. And I want to give the people an opportunity. Now, politics, as we see it, is corrupt. It doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. It's corrupt. We need to revamp the whole system in every nation around this planet. One country at a time, but everybody got to start at home first. Everybody at home got to get the imposters out their house. When all of the imposters is in the streets, then we know what we up against. You know, that fake love, fake hugs, that shit. It's over. Now, all of the ones responsible, they're going to have an opportunity to defend themselves with the facts. But if they can't defend themselves with the facts and satisfy the people, they're going to have to get in that cage. And the ones that they wrong can pick who they want to resolve the matter. See, we got Dana White in this UFC stuff. And we got him there for a reason. Dana White's job is to make it um he was to help Europe develop their own fighting style on the heels of uh, um on the heels of what happened in Babylon. Everybody gave a drop of blood and then Europe was supposed to develop to their own level of greatness so that they can have their name in the history books. This was supposed to be done as Greeks, but they were sacked by Rome and raped by Rome, figuratively and literally, figuratively and literally. All of this stuff is verifiable and will be verified with the facts in, in written form and video format. I'm, I'm going to do all of this work to show y'all. Now, I did a lot of work to get where I'm at now because I wouldn't be here if I didn't. I did a whole lot of research and investigation for a, whole, for a long time to find out why are we suffering like we are. I did the work. I got some more work now. While the po imposters are being weeded out, they're going to all be sent. is and why we call her Big Mama. Okay, so in, if you go to Egypt and you look in the um, Parthodon of Isis or the Temple of Isis in Dendora, you see this star zodiac in the ceiling. As you zoom in to the center, you're going to see what's known as Tawaret. She is the zoo type of a uh, hippopotamus and she got in one hand, she got a, a, a big ass beak cleaver. All right. The energy that comes from the center of the universe is her energy. Right. As prime creator, we call her Big Mama because when we have a Big Mama on Earth, she represents that energy. She behaves according to the energy that the universe operates from. She don't behave on what our hopes, wishes and desires is. She's true to self and true to nature. 
So the prime creator is Big Mama. And we call our representatives or the head of the families in the matriarchy Big Mama. And then all of the Big Mamas get together and they form a council of elders. And they become the lawmakers. So they be, they collectively harness more Big Mama energy or prime creator energy than anybody else because they are tuned in from their life lessons to the frequency. So they can, it's like your ancestors. Your ancestors talk to you through children and elders. They don't talk to you through somebody living in the humdrum of life because they can't hear them. So when we say big mama and big mama energy, we're talking prime creator and prime creative energies. So with that being said, um, I remember I asked you this question prior in another live um, to, dis to be able to distinguish the difference between um, the concept of big mama and the concept of non ether. Can you just give a, just a brief explanation of that for the listeners? So we call uh, Prime Creator Big Mama. Nine Ether is the energy she used to create dark matter, which is pure Big Mama energy. So when we talk in Nine Ether, this is what we're talking about. The highest expression of all creative forces rolled into one, Nine Ether. And it's reflected on the earth by the lowest frequency to maintain the holographic matrix of Six Ether. So we always been taught that um, you, you have nine ether, six ether, and three ether, right? And relative to the physical, nine ether beings was considered dark skin, woolly head people or the black or brown race. And the six ether and the three ether uh, represented the uh, pale and albino races. Um, how true is that in relation to the knowledge that you know about nine ether, six ether, and three ether? I'm not familiar with the three ether. The, I know that the six ether, as Pops explain it, six ether in death becomes ghost, right? And ghost is um, going back to prime source the back way, the bottom way, whereas nine ether is going to source out the top. That's why they got us disoriented. South is up, north is down, but they told us it's the other way around. Right. Now, I made a PowerPoint uh, a while back about that. And um, I made a video about two years ago about it, um, you know, breaking it down from a thermodynamic perspective. I'm showing everybody the thermodynamic process of nine ether going from nine to six and six to three, three back to six and six back to nine. So I follow you. Mm -hmm. So the paradigm of three, six, nine is predicated upon a three sided pyramid. And the three sided pyramid is the pyramid mean fire in the middle. So the three-sided pyramid becomes the um, agency by which you harness the um, what they call the uh, creative fires or the creative energies, which is, again, dark matter, um, unseen energy. And you're able to utilize it to effect effectuate all type of alchemical processes in varying different things. So you take a dull razor blade and you set it under a small pyramid and next thing you know, it's sharp for no reason. Hmm. That's interesting. So when we talk about uh, numerology numbers, right, we we see that um, there was a video that I watched on Nikola Tesla, and he was breaking down um, certain numbers that had um, basically various influences on the universe. And he used 369. What are the relevance to those three numbers as it relates to the universe? Those th the 369 is the creative potentialities. It starts with the three. Remember, two or more gathered together in my name, then I am also. If two gathered together and I am there also, it'd be number three. Right. All right. So now, if you're building a pyramid with three sides, you got I am there also three times with the three, then the six, then the nine. So now you've got triple creative potentialities converging at the center of the pyramid, which generates the fire in the middle. Okay. That's, that's, that's pretty much um, 
what the video was explaining, but they just went a little bit more in depth. And it was just showing like when you add these numbers from the top to the bottom, you know, it all comes back to nine. And, and, and pretty much um, the, the narrative was that nine was the highest number in mathematics. It is. In Egypt, they don't count from one to nine. They can, I mean, they count from nine to one. But over here, well, they actually uh, count from 10 to one. 10 being the highest expression of alpha meeting omega, the unity of the beginning and the ending. It's represented by the serpent with the tail in his mouth. Okay. So let, let's go here with it then. All right, so when you start talking about the origin, structure, and evolution of the universe, they, they always name a prime mover. Would that prime mover be Big Mama? That's Big Mama energy. Okay. And it's so, called, in uh, modern science, it's called prima matter. If you look at the word prima matter, it really translates from Latin to English as the prime mother. Right, because matter does mean mother in etymology. Mm -hmm. So what, what are they actually trying to convey by using the terminology prime mother? I mean, not prime mother, I'm sorry, um, prime mover. They're just trying to talk over your head with double talk because we know that the prime mover is the prime mother. Right. So if the source don't say it, it don't move. Okay. So if we look at the fact that the, the, the sisters, or, you know, are supposed to be in the position of actually like ruling and building the council, but when we look at history, um, men have pretty much overthrown them. In what way, when the matriarchal society rises like completely, can we make sure, or is there a way that we can make sure that that doesn't happen? Well, the only reason why it happened because of what Bobby Hemmings liked to call the great debauchery, when they created some synthetic humans that were sentient. And that violated galactic law because they had no right of ascension. Okay. What does right of ascension um, represent? Your ability to traverse higher realms um, of consciousness. What used to happen with them is they would have a neurological shutdown whenever the sacred secretion began to rise. It caused strokes and it caused them to end up like Stephen Hawkins if they thoughts get too powerful their body starts to suffer because they are genetically engineered to die before they ever reach God's status. Okay. So um, explain right of ascension. The right of ascension is one of the earth rights, right? And the women uh, have always been in charge of the earth rights. And um, it's your right to be unrestricted in your spiritual development in a free will universe. It's a right, it's not a privilege. So when you deprive somebody of the right to a sin and they sentient, then you acting as what we would call in modern terminologies as devil. Okay. That's that's deep because now it's almost like saying that um everything has its proper place and position. And when you're going, moving contrary to that, for one, it's going to disrupt the harmony of it all, but it's also going to actually um, put you in a certain level or put you on a certain level, I should say, um, that gives you pretty much a bad um, uh, disposition. Right. So when we talk about earth rights, right, that's the right to uh, do what's necessary for the maintenance of the land, the air and the water, which we call the great law. And that right is falls to the women first because Earth is a feminine planet. Had we been on Mars, patriarchy would have been the order. We're not on Mars. We're on Earth. Okay. So would you say that that's coming more sooner than later as far as this um, re-erection of the matriarchal society, or we still have a long way to go? It's happening in real time. Um, most people not even seeing it because they're too caught up in the humdrum of go to work, send the kids to school, come home, cook dinner, and go to bed. They can't see shit. Their life is going by in a blur. They doing the same thing today that they was doing on this day 10 years ago. 
Okay. That's what that's why they teach you to, to um follow habits so that you won't be able to innovate on anything new because you fall into that um into a cycle, and that cycle is what locks you into the slavery. It's all systematically designed that way. Hmm. So what qualities do we need to look for in the, the system to notice that they have what it takes to be in that position? Because I'm pretty sure that um, everyone may not you know, fit the criteria. Most love, most respect is the standard. The sister that's most loved and respected by the most women around the world is the highest ranked woman on the planet. I remember you said that you referred to uh, Farrakhan's wife um, who, who presently holds those qualities. Yeah, she is the most loved, most respected out of all of the women leaders she met around the world. They all loved her and respected her more than they did each other. Do you think that that's due to Farrakhan being Farrakhan or her blazing her own path? That's like saying what came first, the chicken or the egg. <laughs> they can listen. When they went to Claire, Claire got to get a juice to, to um, at that time, her name is Betsy Ross. Right. She got to give her the juice. The only way she's going to give her the juice is if she give her the righteous name. The righteous name is Khadija. Her name is not uh, Khadija Farrakhan, it's Khadija Muhammad. Right. Farrakhan name is Farrakhan Muhammad. Right. But we tend to call her Khadija Farrakhan and call him Louis Farrakhan. That's because we don't know who they is. Okay. In uh, oh. Egypt, Farrakhan was known as the Pharaoh A. 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 Apostrophe A. Who was the interim leader when King Tut was assassinated. Okay. So back to Egypt, this is another question I've been asked uh, for you to expound on. Why did the Egyptians put different animals' heads to represent different to represent different gods and goddesses? Like, what does those animals have in common with those energies of those deities? Every tribe have a totem animal that represents their clan. So let's say over here you see a totem pole, you see mostly animals on it. Those are the totem animal of each tribe that's in that, that's on that pole. That's who's in this area. The totem animal is just tells you whose turn it is to rule. Okay. So the Egyptians use a plethora of different animals. They use frogs, they use, they use All mice. of those clans have ruled already. It's only one left. The last one to rise to power, you don't see him in the hieroglyphics. And that's the gorilla. Who is that? The gorilla. Okay, and why is that? Because it's time to rule had came yet. It just now got here. Hmm. So what what intellectually speaking was it that created that representation for the deities? The zoo type? The who? Would you mean like the, the what you mean by representation of the deities? Okay, so the goddess Sekhmet had a lion head or a lioness head. Mm -hmm. Um, why did they associate the lion with her, but they associated the ibis bird with Thoth or Tehuti? So the lioness is you, know, you can study the lion and you understand why she's represented as the lioness. The segment position is the next one of the symbols in line to become the queen of heaven and earth. Okay. Right? So, so she'll be segment until the uh, rule of the former offset has been ex uh, exhausted or depleted. And then the segment is the next in line. So it's a priesthood under segment. It's a priesthood under Bast. Bast fall under segment. Bast is represented by the Black Panther, a cat. And also the house cats, which is the familiars of those who come from the house of the feline. Feline right. means feminine line, meaning the mother line of rulership on earth. Tehuti having the Hebrew's head is because the way that the bird, when he's looking for his food, it appears to be studying. 
So the the bird, the Bengal bird that studies became synonymous with the man who studied out of the bird clans. Right. And there's all kind of bird clans, hawks, falcons, eagles, um, condors, vultures. They all have a different um, expression, but they all fall under to who the, um, the feathered serpents. So what, what, what should the brothers be doing right now? Us as the men, what, what should we be doing right now? Everybody got to do what they feel in their heart they're driven to do. For somebody to tell you what you should be doing, that means that you don't know who you are yet. Right. So the first order of business is to study the self. Find out who you are. Look for yourself in everything you read and write. Okay. So the reason why, uh, well, I'm, a, I'm guessing this now, um, one of the brothers asked that is maybe because um, there may be some specific things. Um, of course, we know, you know, um, the, the shadow work has to be done, but maybe some other things that they, you know, I guess, hadn't yet come to the realization that, you know, the brothers should actually be doing to put themselves in a better position. Well, the, a couple of things you should be doing, clean your filters, your liver, kidneys, your um, lymphatic system, they got herbs that do all of that stuff. Any, uh, any, <coughs> <coughs> <excuse me. coughs> anybody that work in most health food 